Welcome to the MNSRC Lightning Topics program. In this episode, we're going to focus on the required player equipment. Boring? Eh, probably. And yet, player equipment seems to drive a fair number of arguments between players, parents, referees, and coaches over what's allowed. Let's clear up some misconceptions. Player uniform is made up of five mandatory components. Shirt, shorts, socks, shin guards, and shoes. Every player has to be wearing these five items. Sorry, streakers, you're not permitted. The shirt needs to be the same color for everybody on the team. Numbers are not required by the international board rules, but most competitions require jersey numbers so we can tell the players apart. If a player is wearing long sleeves under the jersey, the color of those sleeves should match the primary color of the jersey, but at the youth level and in lower level amateur matches, this color matching is often overlooked, especially in places like Minnesota. We strongly recommend that players do not wear hooded sweatshirts with the hood hanging out. This becomes an easy way to illegally horse collar a player during physical play. But again, very young youth levels, we can overlook it. The shorts also need to be the same color for everybody on the team. Leggings may be worn under the shorts and they should match either the primary color of the short or the color of the hem. Socks for each team must all be the same color, but there are no requirements that the socks be lighter or darker in color. Socks have to cover the shin guards. Any tape or wraps on the outside of the socks have to match the color of the sock that it's applied to. Referees are permitted to force a player to remove any outside material if it doesn't comply with this requirement. Shin guards are mandatory for all players. The International Board does not mandate a specific measurement for shin guards, only that they have to be worn and they need to be completely covered by the socks. Wear tiny shin guards, your choice. Shoes have to be safe. There's no requirement that only soccer shoes may be worn. However, shoes designed for other sports may have features that render them unsafe. For example, baseball cleats have sharper points on the cleats or a metal plate to cover the toe, and that would be considered unsafe. We hope this clarifies the required equipment for players. Make sure you catch our follow-up on this topic covering player equipment that's not permitted. If you have any further questions on this topic, don't hesitate to contact us through www.minnesotasrc.com.